gamers today we are doing malian video and the video is everything you need to know about malian so i've done i think four of these for the old sieves i've done one of these for ottomans and we're about to do the malian one so i'm gonna what i'm going to do in the video i've been streaming eight hours i'm tired as hell eight and a half actually uh, what I'm going to do in this video is talk about the Malian bonuses and then we're going to go into the game, show you all their unique units, which there are plenty because all their units are actually unique except archers, which are standard, but every other unit they have is completely unique. Once we do that, I'll give you a couple of trips, uh, tips and tricks, not the trips and ticks, um, regarding what you can do, you know, min-maxing your, your cows or your uh, uh, gold pits and stuff like that. So let's get started. Now, first things first, Malian's difficulty, three out of three, probably correct. Uh, I think it's a very micro-intensive sieve and it has very, very unique mechanics. So I would probably say it's three out of three. Right now, balance-wise, it's a little bit on a weaker side, but it is uh, November 4th right now as I'm recording this. So if you're watching this in a month, maybe Malian's are OP, I don't know. Uh, you can always check out my Twitch and YouTube for updates on that. So, gold economy, infantry, cattle, civilization bonuses. So, Malians can construct pit mines on gold veins to generate gold without depleting the deposit. Just like Mongols can create ubus on stone to get passive stone income, Malians can get basically pit mines on gold veins, but it does not deplete. So, Mongol ubus deplete stone over time, these ones do not. And even when a uh, gold mine is depleted through mining, you will still be generating gold with pit mines. So once you build a pit mine, you can still mine gold. And once you deplete all the gold, the pit mine will continue generating gold as normal. So that's important to know. Second one, produce cattle that can be harvested quickly. So cattle, I don't really know the exact gather rate, but you produce cattle at a mill, which I'll show you guys in the game. They have 500 food, they cost 100 gold. And um, they have a gather rate between like deer and boar, somewhere there. I don't know exactly. Some people told me it's like boar gathering rate, but I don't think it is. I think it's a deer gathering rate, so I'm not 100% sure. And they can also put, uh, they can also garrison the cattle in cattle ranches, which you gain food over time, which I'm going to show you guys in game. The next thing is uh, their unique units. I'm not going to go through all of these because I'm going to show you those in game. Uh, traders and trade ships that pass by tall outposts instantly provide bonus gold based on the amount of gold being carried. So they're kind of pushed as like a trade sieve as well, uh, where if you build a normal tower, so just, you know, a regular tower on the path where your traders are passing, every time they pass, you will get a percentage of the total gold being carried. Once you pass, it's like a toll gate. Um, you will get a little bit of extra gold and there's also a landmark that provides a little bit of something else which i'm going to show you uh movement speed of all ships is increased when near docks i did not know that actually uh houses construct twice as fast but are half cost and provide uh half the amount of population and cannot harvest boar so let's get into the game and then i'm going to show you guys everything else that goes along with it so in age one, uh, Malians, this is what they can produce. A tower, um, walls, farms, uh, mill. I'm going to build one of each. Uh, it's a lumber camp, mining camp. These are the standard buildings and they have no unique upgrades in the lumber camp, no unique upgrades in the mining camp. But what they do have is they have the gold pit or pit mine from dark age and you can build one pit mine per age so you can have a total of four one in one in dark age one feudal one castle and one in imperial so the way it works is very simple you just build it over uh the gold mine you can build it over big gold mines uh as well oh i can't show you you can build another one um but once you do that it will start generating gold now the way these pit mines work is they actually generate gold and it increases uh for every house or mining camp around it so you will see uh i don't know if it's calculated instantly yeah so right now it's gathering it's gathering six gold per minute 
and with each next thing it's going to increase so right now it's up to 12 because of this mining camp and the way you want to play malians is you want to build houses around it um these are your normal population houses and like i said earlier uh these have half health they cost half wood so they cost 25 wood but they only provide you with five supply but you always want to be, ma be building malian houses around gold veins and if you look now the income is going to be increasing increasing and i think it caps at 80 or 90 gold per minute for the small gold vein and for larger gold vein i think it caps out at 120 gold per minute for a reference point capturing a sacred site is 100 gold per minute capturing a relic is 80 gold per minute so it's very very good passive income and it basically allows you to not if you want to fight in feudal you don't need to mine any gold you will get enough uh, passive income to get your upgrades and everything else so um let's see okay we'll send these guys here just so they have something to do and once i got all these uh houses around in mining camp you'll see it's about to increase to the maximum amount and this is like the maximum amount of houses you can have around the small gold vein so while we wait for that we're gonna build a barracks that we can also build in dark age of course just like every other sieve in the game yeah so it caps out at 90 which you'll see in a second and right here in the mill you can produce cattle so you can produce this cattle in dark age if you want to all the other upgrades are normal so we're gonna produce a couple of them as well just so you guys can see 86 gold per minute it's about to go to 90 in a second so the first like i said all malian units are unique except archers so the first unit i'll be showing you guys is donzos um donzos are basically their spearmen but they are a tiny bit different which i'm going to show you in a second so the reason why they're different is they cost 60 30 so usually their normal spearmen are 60 60 20 but donzos actually start with one melee armor so this is the difference between them and normal spearmen they start with one extra melee armor but they are 10 wood um, more expensive now another thing about donzos is they can throw spears javelin throw and every uh whenever they throw a spear there's a 20 second cooldown that starts so these javelin throws are really really good because um, obviously spearmen aka donzos do bonus damage against cavalry so uh, not only you can snipe cavalry super super easy with donzos from a far away uh, you can also pick off cavalry before the fight even starts like you can focus for one night and just kill it um, so that's really cool and even though they're melee units you can kind of poke and wait for the cool and then poke again so I'll show you this is the range of donzo javelin throw um, obviously they're not gonna do a lot of damage against boar because it has 4-4 armor but every time you upgrade donzos uh, the javelin throw damage also gets increased just so you guys know and like I said they do crap ton of damage against um, knights specifically so these are the cows and like i said they have 500 food and they cost 100 gold so the way you can get food from them just like normal uh sheep you just collect from them now one thing to know even though their gathering rate is equal to deer or boar don't know yet uh survival techniques will actually not increase the gathering rate on them because this is not hunted meat so if you want to go for a lot of cows and collect food from them you need horticulture that's what increases your food income uh gathering on cows just so you guys know. all right um i think it's time to age up and show you guys what else they have so age up uh first manza quarry this is the one that's more popular and more standard right now it generates 75 gold per minute or stone uh, so you can toggle it so you can either once you make it it's on gold and then if you want to put stone you just press uh, hotkey for that and it collects 75 stone per minute now there are some cool things you can do with this you can either just get more gold and then produce cattle with it or you can put it on stone and then eventually 
you'll be able to build a PC. So this is a more standard one. It does feel a bit underwhelming because after 10 minutes you get 750 gold, which is not a lot. Uh, but the second one is not too much better. Um, so this is the trade landmark. So this acts as the toll outpost. Uh, I'm going to show you this one because it's more unique, I guess. And the other landmark is just, it just gives gold or, or you know, or stone. So it's nothing special. I'm going to build it right here because I'm going to show you guys the trading part of, uh, of Malians just to see how it works because there's some details on it. So acts as a toll outpost that comes with a defensive arrow slits. All traders and trade ships taxed will generate food equal to the taxed gold at this landmark. All other toll outposts will generate 50% of taxed gold as food. So, let me let me decipher that a little bit. So, I'm going to build a tower here. A tower here. A tower here. And a tower here. There. All right, so what this means is if I build a market right here and I start trading They're gonna give gold like just like any other trader But every time you pass these toll outposts aka they can also be upgraded to you know Just like normal towers. They will now give you uh, also food and This one will give you I think full food amount. We'll see in a second I don't really know exactly how it works because I didn't really uh, go this now there's another thing that um this provides but i don't know why i can't see it here i don't know where i can see that uh, malians have another bonus that every time you do a trade your research times get reduced or something like that i can't remember where i read that but it's true and if you do enough trading you can actually get your research times down to zero seconds, but it's very slow. Like you need to trade for like 50 minutes or something. So it's very slow. Yeah, I don't know. You guys didn't know this probably, but yeah, whenever you trade with Malians, it's on the tech tree. Yeah. Uh, whenever you trade with Malians, your research times in all buildings get reduced. So I found out about this like a week ago. Um, so yeah, I'm going to build couple of traders just so you guys see how that works and let's talk about h2 so you can upgrade your donzos and now you can trade musafari warriors now let's build this as well boom, boom, boom. so you can build musafari warriors so what are musafari warriors uh that's basically the malian version of man at arms I guess it replaces men at arms, but it has nothing to do with men at arms. So Malians do not have armored units at all. So Musifati warriors are basically glass cannon, aka super squishy units that are supposed to counter armored units. We're gonna build traders over here. So Musifati warriors are supposed to counter armored units and they actually deal pretty well against armored units. Uh, they only cost 50-30, which is very, very cheap. And with equal costs and equal numbers, they will actually beat knights um, and or men at arms. So they're a very good counter. What's the problem? The problem is they die really fucking easy. So they got 85 health, okay? They got zero armor. So archers, that do bonus damage against light infantry absolutely demolish these so a hot tip if you ever play against malians always make archers because most of their units get countered by archers because they don't have armored units so um if you look archer has five damage plus five versus light melee infantry they are light melee infantry now um let me build houses there we go. And another thing I'm gonna do is show you, uh, I'm gonna build a second gold pit. And as you can see, the reason why this gold pit will generate more gold compared to this one is because this is bigger gold mine. So you can fit more houses around it, thus giving you more gold per minute. 
amazing. Uh, so yeah, these are Musfari Warriors, and there's another cool thing about Musfari Warriors that's not too useful right now, and I hope they buff it, but they can actually go stealth. So right now, Musafari Warriors are stealthed, and the stealth lasts 20 seconds. While in stealth, units are invisible until they're revealed by enemy scouts, outposts, or landmark town centers, or they engage in combat. So in theory, I could approach these units in stealth, and around this time is when they would get revealed, so you can ambush your opponent, you can ambush the opponent's siege, but if there is a scout, they will gain vision. So that's something you, be, you need to be careful of. Now, um, what else can we talk about? Let me make some other unique units. And while we do that, so I made some traders. So traders on the way down are not getting anything because they're not carrying gold. But uh, let's check. Let's follow these traders so it's easy to to see. So what's gonna happen? Just to show you guys and explain how this works. So what's gonna happen is they're gonna pick up gold like any trader. And then they're gonna go back home and you see this zero out of five that's the maximum amount of outposts that they can get the the tax gold from so they have 176 gold and when they pass next to this tower because they built this landmark the trade network saharan trade network you see this is the range once they enter i got eight food and 17 gold okay so that's probably like eight and a half food and 17 gold so I'm getting uh, a tax gold, so 10% of the total gold carried, I get gold, and 50% of that tax I'm getting in food. But when you pass this landmark, check what happens. I'm going to get 17 food and 17 gold. So without this landmark the only thing that i would be getting next to towers or the uh or, you know next to the five towers i would only be getting gold only because of this landmark i am getting food as well and every time you pass you'll see now it's four out of five and when you pass the last tower you will be five out of five so that's how malian traders work um and it's very important to know because malians will probably become uh, Civ that is very spammed in team games and done like mass trading and especially in 3v3s and 4v4s so Yeah um, Another thing is um, Yeah, other than that when they arrive they just give return of pure gold so Malian trading if it can get going you're gonna get crap ton of food and you're gonna get uh, Gold as well. So that's pretty good and again, it reduces research times every time a trade is completed. Um, as you can see, I was going to say I can't prove it to you, but I can because uh, horticulture upgrade time is 40 seconds. Look, it's getting reduced with each trade being re uh, uh, put in. So these three, three traders just dropped off gold and it went from 39 seconds to 37 seconds. Obviously, there's diminishing returns on this. So if next three traders drop off, it's not going to go down to 34 seconds. I think if these two drop off, uh, it might go down to 36 or it might not move at all. So the more you trade, oh, 36, okay. So the more you trade, the less reducing uh, uh, will happen. So you see this one didn't uh, reduce any. And this works for uh, eco upgrades or military upgrades. And again, I haven't seen anyone mention this anywhere. And it's not mentioned in any guys from what I've seen. So that's something for you guys to know. As you can see here, the big gold pit mine is giving 120 gold per minute. And this one is giving 90 gold per minute. So that's pretty good numbers. Now, what's next? Um, let's talk about javelin throwers. So in archer ranges, um, Malians can build archers. They can build uh, javelin throwers and Musafari gunners, which is their version of hand cannoneers. So what are javelin throwers? Javelin throwers have pretty big range. I'm gonna show you guys. Pretty long range. So if I attack this boar, so they throw a spear and then you can kite and attack and kite and attack. And as you can see, they're doing pretty good damage against boar. And that is because they do eight damage per shot 
plus four damage against ranged. So javelin throwers are supposed to counter archers and ranged units in general. So one of the more popular comps whenever you play Malians is Donzos and Javelin Throwers. Donzos take care of the cavalry. Uh, javelin Throwers will mow down uh, archers pretty well. You just have to target fire. And then both Javelin Throwers and Donzos will take care of the spears or, or any melee units because Donzos have plus one melee armor. Now, Javelin Throwers also have three ranged armor so even if the opponent has insane amounts of archers fighting the javelin throwers they do like almost no damage because if you look um, where are my archer here we go so archer does five damage so if they shoot at a javelin thrower they will only do two damage per shot which is nothing so yeah javelin throwers are archer counters they cost 80 food and 40 gold and uh they're a very good unit and even against stuff like horsemen, they do pretty okay damage because uh, their base damage is 8. Alright, next unit. Or sorry, next thing we'll be talking about before we move on to the stables. I'm going to be building these. And what these are, you unlock these in Feudal Age. And these are the cattle ranches that I mentioned earlier. Just let me build a couple of dogs here. So what are cattle ranches? You can put up to 20 total. You can only have 20 cows out. And what you can do is you can put cows inside and the cattle that's garrisoned in this ranch will generate 28 food per minute. So this equals to, uh, was it 480 food per minute? I forgot the exact number. I think it's 480 food per minute. 560? Is it 560? I'll trust you. I'm too tired. Yeah, it is 560. You're right. Yeah, it is 560. So, the way you put the cows in is very simple. You just let, tell them to go inside. So, what's going to happen now is cows are slowly going to trickle in. You can see three cows can be in cattle ranch. So, you only need seven cattle ranches because you can only make... 20 cows total uh if i were to kill a cow i can make another one but the alive ones you can only have 20. so technically you can you can be gathering for like 10 cattle uh, carcasses and still have 20 but you cannot have more than 20 alive and once you put all these in you will get passive income for the rest of the game now this is really really good uh, food income. Why? Because these cows don't cost supply, which is kind of crazy. They don't cost supply, so you can have this 560 food, food per minute for the rest of the game. And it might not seem like a lot, but if you consider the game might last over 30 minutes, that is crazy amount of food per minute you're gathering for free. Like, you're not using any villagers. Yes, you have the initial cost, but after that, you're getting a lot, a lot of value from them. And it's definitely noticeable when you play the game that you have a lot of food with Malians. All right. Upgrading this, by the way, doesn't impact the cow income. It doesn't do anything. Yeah, because you're not gathering from them. They're in the ranches, right? Regarding upgrades, they have all the normal upgrades. And they have this upgrade in Imperial Age which increases the range damage by donzos so donzo spear throw these are the, the spearmen uh archer damage by plus two and javelin throwers damage by plus two so uh malians do not have incendiary arrows upgrade uh in university so they have this instead so every other sim in the game has incendiary arrows they do not why don't you just eat the cows because it's 100 gold per cow that's why um, <coughs> so it can be used to just purchase cow and eat them, but this is a lot better in the long run because you also don't need villagers to work them. You can use your villagers somewhere else. Um, all right. So with that being said, let's move on to the stable units. And there's something really interesting in their stables happening as well. First things first, you will notice there's only two units. Can your opponent kill your cows? Yes, they can. Um, so the first unit they have is Sofa. 
so Sofa is between Horseman and the Knight. It's not as tanky as a Knight. It doesn't do as much damage as a Knight. It doesn't cost as much as a Knight. But it is better than Horseman health-wise, armor-wise, damage-wise, and it is more expensive than a Horseman. It's literally... It's literally in between Horseman and a Knight. It's for cost, for damage, for everything else. So, if you look, Sofa has 155 health. It has 2 melee armor, 2 ranged armor. It has 16 damage. And it has plus 2 damage versus infantry. Um, so, this is any infantry in the game. So, if you're playing against uh, Knight Sivs, the sofas will lose like one knight will beat out one sofa but technically you can have more sofas because they are cheaper but i would still advise you if you're playing against a knight sieve go donzos because i don't want, you don't want to be doing this kind of trade but if you're playing against sieves that don't have knights and have horsemen you can go for sofas mass them and then you can go archers to kill their spearmen because they cannot make horsemen to kill your sofas uh one thing to note is sofas will trade uh a, a bit worse then knights will against archers because of their armor and less health now the second unit they have is the scout and their scouts actually cost 90 food so that's something to consider so other civ scouts cost 70 food um their scouts cost 90 food now as you can see they have a little upgrade and you can upgrade uh scouts to warrior scouts and uh, these scouts are actually quite good so what happens when you upgrade them they go from one damage to seven damage per hit and they also have uh as you can see plus 10 damage versus scout and plus uh 10 damage versus siege so their movement speed is equal to a horseman which means that malian scouts once they're upgraded in feudal outrun the every other civ enemy scouts so other scouts will have less movement speed and if you get this or if you play against Malians if you see stables you need to be very very careful because the Malian scout will very quickly catch up with your scout and kill it uh, because it is a lot faster than them and they have 17 damage per hit on enemy scouts <coughs> so if you see Malian scouts and if you see a couple of them attacking your villagers you should run because they will kill your villagers so a very popular build or opening with Malians is the moment you age up, you make stables and you instantly upgrade a scout to kill enemy scouts and then you instantly go harass their stone or whatever else. So yeah. And these can be further upgraded in the next ages, which I will be talking a little bit later. Okay. Next thing. Uh, what is there left to talk? Uh, water. Let's cover the water. Um, build a couple of those. Oh, sorry, not a couple of those. So, um, Malians have normal, uh, uh, you know, ships just like any Civ. They have the same stats. You can build fishing boats, you can build the trade ships, and you can build the transport ships. Uh, they do not have Imperial ship. So this is a couple of civs don't have imperial ships uh rus is also one of them instead they have this mounted guns in imperial replaces sprinkled ships weaponry with cannons which provide greater range and damage so they don't have uh bow chads or uh carrots now their unique upgrade for water is archer ships fire an additional two javelin weapons so pretty good it's pretty good. Their archer ships are very, very good. And apparently, which I didn't know, is their movement speed is faster when you're in range of docks. I'm actually curious to see. Speed increased by 15%. That's kind of crazy. I didn't know that. Malian OP. I'm trying to see what the range is. I guess the range is like here, but it stays... The buff stays for quite a bit. Yeah, there we go. Speed increased by 15%. So that's pretty cool. Now, these are their ships. You can see they look cool. They're kind of unique. And these are the... This is the archer ship, demo ship, uh, spring ship. Now, one cool thing about Malians is that you may or may not know. <laughs> a lot of people at Red Bull World actually did not know this. But 
Transfer ship is not only a transfer ship, and it doesn't say here, it says no combat, which is the funny part, but if you load units into the transfer ship, it will shoot. So if you load up five villagers super early in the game, even in Dark Age, you can actually kill enemy fishing boats. Uh, they basically, just like when you garrison villages in the tower, the tower shoots arrows. The same thing, when you garrison villagers into transfer ship, it will shoot arrows and it can shoot while moving. There you go. Amazing. All right. With all that being said, I think we can move on to castle. Um, so in castle, you have two landmarks. One is very straightforward. Uh, nearby cattle provide 20 food per minute. So basically, you build this landmark like this. And you go from 560 food per minute to uh, 960 food per minute. Just, just by building this landmark, you get bonus 400 food per minute. And at 1,000 food per minute, that is serious, serious income and very, very good. Um, but the other landmark, which I'm going to show you instead because it's more unique and, you know, there's actually stuff to discuss, is the Farimba Garrison. So what is Farimba Garrison? Quickly produces barracks and archer units five at a time. Unit cost is converted to gold and reduced by 20%. So, this is the kind of the whole point of Malian Sith, is that it's a gold Sith. You get a lot of passive gold from gold pips. Uh, so this is kind of how the Malian, I think it's like supposed to be played. Obviously you can play it the normal route and have cows for food income and you chop wood and all of that. But another way to play Malians is to age up to castle and use Farimba Garrison. You can see five Donzos cost 360 gold, five Musifari Warriors cost 320, five Archers cost 320, five Javelin Throwers cost 480, and then five Musifari Gunners cost 960 gold. And like I said, even though you have this gold pit, I can now send my workers on the uh, gold mine and still get gold underneath it while I'm getting the passive gold. So I'm gonna make a couple of these just so you guys see how it works. I mean, it's nothing special. You just produce units out of that landmark and five units come out at the same time. And you can also upgrade them here as well, or you can upgrade here. By the way, you can see that the veteran upgrades are taking 13 seconds. Horticulture is now 20 seconds. So we started with 40 second horticulture, but because of the trading, now it's 20 seconds. So, yeah. And there you go, five dones has come out. And this is one of the ways to play Malians. Once you hit castle, you put a bunch of villagers on gold, and now you just spend units out of this uh, uh, landmark, and you just mass produce. Because you can still have these cows, by the way. You're still getting 560 gold uh, food per minute, sorry. You don't need the other landmark to produce extra food. So, um, add more traders, sure. Let's do it. There you go. All right. I'll build a couple of houses here. So, um, what is next? What is next? All right. Uh, they have a unique upgrade, by the way. I forgot to tell you guys this. In uh, Town Center, which is buildings are repaired 100% faster, and this is unique to Malians. Now, I gotta admit, I don't know how this works exactly. I don't know if you're just repairing 100% faster, thus using twice as many resources, or if you're using same amount of resources to repair, uh, you're just repairing faster. Does that make sense? So I'm not 100% how this works. I am assuming that if you're repairing, you're repairing twice as fast, but using twice as many resources. Um, assuming. Don't know. Unit upgrades are gold too. Uh, no, unit upgrades are, are normal. So even if you get them here, they're, you know, quote unquote normal. Um, now, what did I want to say? Um, Let's go on to what we got in the castle age. So first things first, we can upgrade Donzos, we can upgrade uh, Musafari Warriors, we're gonna upgrade Archers, we're gonna upgrade Javelin Throwers. Um, and another cool thing about Malians is 
I told you guys that the archers are the only unit that they have that's uh, same like every other sieve. Well, actually, uh, their archers get a unique upgrade, poison arrows. And archers basically get um, poison arrows and they deal an extra 3 damage over 6 seconds and this ignores armor. So it basically does half a damage every second. This ignores armor and this stacks. Now, there's a bug and I reported it uh, at the event uh, because the developers were there at the Red Bull event. And they will hopefully fix it soon. This is supposed to stack indefinitely. So if you have 50 archers, you're supposed to shoot at a knight and 50 stacks of this poison should be on. But right now it's capped at 8. So this is a bug and will hopefully be fixed very, very soon. So uh, what you can do with Malians, because you don't have crossbows, as you can see, to deal with armored units in castle, you have Musafari warriors, which are melee, and you're supposed to use archers and basically use 20, 30 archers. You shoot a man at arm, the poison, like you shoot once and then you shoot something else because the poison will kill the man at arm. So that's how you're supposed to use them. But right now there's a bug where this poison caps it only 8 stacks, so it's not as good. But when it works, it's actually really, really good because you can basically one-shot uh, men-at-arms or knights um, if you focus fire them. So, there you go. Now, let me move these units around a bit. So here are Donzos. Uh, now they do 9 damage plus 23 against cavalry. And their spears are going to do bonus damage. Uh, you build another archer. These are the Musafari warriors. Now they got 105 health and they do 12 damage plus 12 versus heavy. So Musafari warriors actually do quite a lot of damage. Their problem is survivability. They just have zero armor. Like obviously you can upgrade them but that's still not enough. Then we got the sofas that I didn't upgrade yet. I'm going to upgrade them in a second, but before that, I'm going to show you how poison arrows work. Uh, I think the upgrade is completed. Yeah, the upgrade is completed. So now, they have this little buff, and if you look, I'm going to shoot at the boar once. And now the boar, you can see, has the poison stacks, and the damage... Oh, 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 oh. oh my god. No, 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 kill the boar! I need it for a tutorial. Okay, the boar is going to regen, so I'm going to shoot it again. And then you'll see how the poison arrows are slowly ticking. So, I shoot it once. So, as you see now, the poison is slowly ticking and killing it. I'm gonna try to run a bit. You can see how fast the damage is going, right? Now imagine if there's like 50 poison arrows onto this board. It would go much, much, much quicker. Um, stables. Let me actually... Where's my villagers? Uh, let's build a mosque. Let's build a siege workshop. And let's build a keep. And then send the villagers over here. Alright. So, in stables, uh, Sofa get an upgrade. So, Sofa are, are, by the way, available in Feudal, if I didn't say that. Um, you can upgrade to Veteran Sofas, which basically just gives them stats. So, we go from 155 health to 195 and 3, three armor. Uh, and their damage goes from 20 uh, to 20 plus 3 versus infantry. Now, what sofas also get is increases the armor of sofas blood by plus 2. And this actually makes them a lot, a lot better. Because now, when you upgrade that, I think that I might be wrong, someone can correct me on this. But knights from other civs in Castle Age have 4 armor. They have 4 um, melee armor and 4 ranged armor. But, sofas have 5 melee armor now and 5 ranged armor. So they actually have higher armor than the knights do. They have less health, they're cheaper, they do less damage, but actually have higher armor. And obviously you could get blacksmith upgrades and get their armor to 7-7. Seven, seven, which is really good, like that's really fucking high armor. Now, uh, that upgrade is only available in castle. And you get an upgrade for veteran scouts. This is actually really nice. Look how fast it upgrades in 9 seconds because of the trading we're doing. Horticulture is now 14 seconds. Let me make more traders. So now once we upgraded the veteran scouts, their movement speed is the same like horsemen. They do 9 damage per hit now. Um, and they're just... Um, 
they also get, which I don't think it says here, or I'm not sure if it does. But right now, they're regenerating health as well uh, at a higher rate uh, once you upgrade them in castle. Uh, they regenerate 5 health per second outside of combat, if I'm not wrong. I might be wrong with the numbers. Uh, so that's their like castle upgrade. They get a little health, a little damage, and yeah. It's been fixed to 1 health per second. Okay, is it even in combat? Because I know it was bugged, but I don't know what it was changed to. Either way, they got regen. Or they have region. Okay. So, um, that's all regarding the units. Um, I built a siege workshop over here. Somalians have sprinkles, mangonels, trebuchets, bombards, and cauldrons. Cauldrons obviously very, very good in the late game. So that's pretty nice for them. Uh, their imams, pretty standard. No bonuses, nothing weird. Out of mosques, so everything's standard there. And their keep also is pretty standard. Now, the one cool thing about Malians is their walls are unique in the way they look. They don't do anything, right? They don't have bonus something, but their walls... I'm about to show you what they look like, which I think is pretty cool. It's a nice little touch, right? Um, it doesn't change anything, but it looks nice. So you can see they have this kind of like mud look. These are their stone walls and they got these spikes as well and stuff. So uh, it looks pretty cool compared to the other sieves and also their towers look uh, different. And you can see the same thing is for keeps. They have these marks and, and spikes and they got, I don't know what that is, fucking cats or something. Um, I don't know if it's a, I mean, I, it kind of looks funny. But, uh, yeah. So, yeah, this is what they this is what they look like. Let me chop this tree so you guys can see a little bit better. I mean, not not like home cats, but cats, you know, like, like, yeah. So there you go. That's the cool thing about Malian. Now, next thing is the last landmarks, the last age landmarks. Big cats. Stone tower. There it is. They look pretty cool. Alright, so the next thing we're going to show is the Imperial Age landmarks and we're pretty much done, almost done with the guide. Also their towers look different. Um, I guess I have them here. I'm going to upgrade them so you guys can see. Oh yeah, their towers also have these kind of like spikes, things, whatever they are. So, uh, let's age up to Imperial. So the first one is a keep landmark. Oops. It's a keep landmark. Acts as a keep. Infantry units nearby the landmark enter stealth for 10 seconds. So if I build this here in that radius zone, any infantry unit that enters will enter stealth as well. So even the units that cannot enter stealth, like archers, will be entering stealth, not cavalry. Uh, Musafari warriors and Musafari gunners gain first strike, dealing more damage when breaking stealth with an attack. Um, this is actually like a massive damage boost. The problem is it's very hard to use this in a game. Um, because the stealth right now is not that great, so you're basically just getting a keep out of this. Uh, you're not really going to get too much value out of this stealth thing. Uh, because the enemy will always have towers in the late game or something, and I'll be able to see your units. So we're gonna go with Griot Barra, and I'm gonna show you what that is once it builds. Um, oh, there you go. There's their towers, and if you upgrade them... Um, what's funny is actually if you upgrade the, uh, the Fortify Outpost, their look like doesn't change almost at all, so it's very hard to say that it has that upgrade. So here we go. Grab Barra is a technology landmark and what you can do with it, you can begin a festival. So this is something, I don't know if you guys ever played, some of you may have played Northgard. Um, you can basically, it does nothing except you can start these three festivals. So it doesn't provide you any bonuses, nothing, except these three festivals. And each of them costs 300 gold. So the first one increases the food gather rate by 50% for 30 seconds. This works on everything. It works on cattle, if you put them in the, the, the garrison thing. 
it works on farms, it works on berries, deer, fish, whatever, you will get higher food gather rate uh, from them. I'm pretty sure it works in cattle, actually. Now, now I'm doubting myself. Pretty sure it works in cattle. I'm gonna. I can just test it. The next one is increases the military unit production speed by 50% for 30 seconds. So again, military that includes docks, stables, barracks, yada yada. And then the last one is siege festival increases siege and torch damage for all units by 100% for 30 seconds. Now. I have played some games where I went mass scouts with Malians in the late game. I went this landmark, and when you activate it, your scouts burn buildings as fast or even faster than uh, Fire Lancers do. So, yeah, it's pretty nice. Uh, so that's something you can go for. Um, also increasing siege damage, like it makes your culverins fucking insane, right? Uh, because then culverins, I'm pretty sure that, yeah, culverins one-shot bombards then, which is pretty insane. And mangonels, you can imagine how much damage they are doing. Now, I am getting, uh, oh, I'm getting 1.7k food per minute because of the traders. So I'm going to activate the food festival and we'll see if the income is going up. But it's also hard to say because of the traders that are also giving me gold. Uh, but the cattle might actually not, because it's it says food gather rate, because you're technically not gathering food from these, right? So maybe it doesn't affect cattle. It should be increasing already by a lot more, I think. Yeah, so I'm not sure about that. But this is pretty ass. Like, if you go to this landmark, I would say the only time you would actually use this is for the siege festival, because usually you have enough production in the late game, so you don't need this. Uh, you should be more than fine on food. Um, with 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 uh, cattle and just like some farms, you don't even need, need that many farms with Malians. You need like maybe thirty farms total. Um, and then this is probably the best one. But like I said, Malian landmarks are kind of underwhelming in my opinion. Castle ones are okay, but feudal and imperial one, me. Um, so let's build their university. And like I mentioned earlier, now we can upgrade precision training, which increases the, the range damage of archers, javelin throws, and tonzos, because they don't have incendiary arrows. Um, what else did we get? Uh, I, 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 I'm trying to think. I mean, we got all the Imperial upgrades, and we also got Musafati gunners, which I'm going to make those right now. And we're going to get these upgrades, and what this upgrade does, this is the Imperial upgrade. Uh, Farima leadership so far increased the movement speed of nearby infantry by 15% So that's just a, a nice little bonus uh, for them So now that we have upgraded, uh, I'm actually gonna fully upgrade Sofas just so you guys can see look at the upgrades in blacksmith. They're taking 10 seconds <laughs> Because of the trading uh, reducing the upgrade time so I'm going to upgrade sofas fully to show you, but a fully upgraded scout, so not fully upgraded, elite warrior scout, has 155 health, 11 damage, and they get a new bonus damage versus ranged. So scouts now do 12 damage, or sorry, 11 damage base, plus 11 damage versus ranged. So they're actually a very, very good counter against hand cannoneers or archers or crossbows. And if you mix them up with um, Griot Bara, Griot Bara Siege Festival, where you can burn buildings, they can be very, very useful. The problem is they still die really, really fast. Like they die way faster than horsemen do to spears or any other units. But if you get sick food income, remember they only cost 90 food. They don't cost anything else. Now, um, let me continue upgrading these things so I can show you guys how it works. And if we look at Madrasa, which is the university, they do not have incendiary arrows here. So there's nothing there. So we're going to upgrade the uh, the cavalry thing. And look, university upgrades or Madrasa upgrades only take 14 seconds to build. And that is because of the trade that's been reducing the upgrade time. So that's really cool. So now, let's get it. 
So once this all finishes, if you look at these scouts, they're pretty, pretty good. For only 9 food, or 90 food, sorry, they got 14 base damage plus bonus damage against these three things. They got 3 3 armor. And sofas, on the other hand, the Chad sofas, got 276 health fully upgraded, 9 melee armor, and 9 ranged armor. Giga chads, actually. Giga, giga chads. I mean, nine, nine armor is pretty crazy. So, yeah. And now we got these, which are the Musafati gunners. So these are the hand cannoneers. And they can also go stealth, by the way. Uh, they got 38 damage. I, I think they have higher attack speed than normal hand cannoneers, but lower range, if I'm not mistaken. And they also have different costs. They're 110 food and 130 gold. So, if you look, they can stealth, and then out of stealth, you can pop this board like a balloon. Same range? Okay, my bad. Um, Alright. So, what else is there left to say? I'm trying to think. You can still produce, by the way, out of the uh, Farimba garrison, just as normal. Um, I'm trying to think what else is there to show. I think that's it. I think that's pretty much it. I mean, I'll build a wonder because I always uh, build a wonder when I do these, just so you guys can see what it looks like. But yeah, that's pretty much Malian. So right now, uh, Malians are a little bit weak, and I do expect uh, buffs to be happening to Malians. They're not having the greatest win rate right now. They are a hard sieve to play because you don't have armored units and that might not seem like a big issue until you play and then you realize it is a big issue. Um, when you play against Malians, making men at arms uh, is pretty good choice because they don't have very good counters against men at arms. They do have Musafari uh, warriors uh, right here. They do have Musafari warriors. The problem with Musafari Warriors, like I said, they're really, really squishy, so the archers just kind of mow them down. I'm going to fully upgrade them just so you guys can see what stats they get to in Imperial. Uh, you can see, still 0-0 zero, zero armor, so not great. Their damage is really good. Like you can see, per hit, they're doing fuck ton of damage. They're doing 33 damage per hit on armored units, which is kind of crazy. Their attack speed is good, but their health and armor is crap. Um, they also have an upgrade, by the way, I forgot to show you guys this, in Imperial. Musafati units heal uh, while in stealth for uh, plus two every one second, which is not that big a deal. They're never going to be low in health, they're always going to die if they get engaged on, so yeah. And also, uh, the other counter that they have against armored units is the poison arrow ones or the hand cannoneers. So, like I said, they don't have like direct counters that are very good. They kind of have soft counters against men at arms, so yeah. I would advise if you play against Malian, always mix in spears with whatever, or sorry, archers with whatever you're going for. So yeah, as this trade is going, um, you can see I'm getting, so this thing is giving me 560 food per minute. So I am getting 1.1k-ish uh, food per minute from trading. So I'm, obviously I have a lot of traders. Um, oh, is this total? I can't do math right now. Too tired. So I got 54 traders and they're giving me about 1.1k food per minute out of that. So you can see with that and with the cattle, you're getting quite a lot of food from uh, from mines. There's the wonder by the way. It's completed. It also has these like wood things, spikes, whatever you want to call it. Um, but yeah, other than that, like I think Malians are super fun sieve to, to use, super fun sieve to play. Uh, it just seems a little bit weak, but hopefully they're going to buff them and make them quite a bit better. I think one of the easiest buffs for them to, would be to just give Musafari warriors like 1-1 one, one armor and they will already be um, a lot, a lot better anyway uh that is pretty much it the next video i'll be releasing is either the ottoman build order guide or the malian build order guide that is the plan 
Uh, if you enjoyed these and I was able to help, I am very happy about that. Very glad because that's the whole point of these videos. I still have everything you need to know about HRE, China, I think Delhi and... I can't remember which one or maybe it's just those three. I'm not sure. Uh, but I'll be making those probably in a week or two because right now the next videos that I want to do is the guides first of all for new sieves and then guides for the other sieves for season three just kind of updating them so yeah um, regarding uh, Malian I feel like people are still testing and figuring out build orders so I'll see which one I'm gonna show you guys for Ottomans I'm gonna show you really cool build order it's really really strong and it's gonna give you a lot of free ladder points again if you're watching on youtube i want to thank you guys so much for watching if you're watching on twitch let's keep going